Hi there everybody and welcome to a new video. Now, for the past few months I have been down the rabbit hole of homage watches because I think they present really good value. But there is also a volume of people that watch my channel that aren't that fussed about homage watches. They want to see things from Seiko, Citizen, Boulevard, so on and so forth. And for those guys, this is the video for you. So we have come back up from that rabbit hole. And today we are looking at a watch or a version of a watch that I have featured many, many times on this channel. And it's a personal favorite of mine. It is, of course, the Boulevard Luna Pilot. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at their limited edition meteorite dial version, of which there are 5,000 pieces available globally. It is a limited edition. Here in Australia, there are only 50 pieces available, and they are from our friends at Starbuy. Now, before I start this video uh, doing the review and what have you, I do want to be really, really clear. I have been loaned this watch from Starbuy, so thank you very much, Deepak, for that. Very kind of you. Uh, but I haven't been incentivized or anything like that. I'm going to put links in the video for you if you want to go and make a purchase. But I want to be really clear, I am not being given a commission or anything like that. Um, this is a give back because I'm being loaned the watches, which is very, very kind of the guys at Starbuy. So, all that being said, we're going to turn the camera around and take a look at this watch in further detail. But if you do like the content, please do consider subscribing. It only takes a second and it doesn't cost you anything at all, but it really helps us out at the channel. So, with that being said, let's turn the camera around and take a look at this watch in further detail. All right, guys, well, we'll start off with the unboxing. So um, bearing in mind, this is a special edition or a limited edition, um, albeit at 5,000 pieces, as I said in the intro, uh, I was a little bit disappointed with the presentation. There is the titanium or anniversary edition, which is substantially cheaper than this. In fact, it's less than half the price of this particular model, and it comes in a much nicer box and has a um, sort of a, a commemorative medallion attached to it. So wasn't overly impressed, if I'm going to be honest, about the packaging that came with the watch. But nonetheless, it is nice to see a good solid box, which admittedly the bog standard Lunar Pilot comes in anyway, and many other models, but it is a nice hard case. You do get that certificate of authenticity, and a little bit of, um, I suppose, collateral explaining the uh, background to this particular watch. And, of course, some of the information that talks about this being a meteorite dial. Now, meteorite dial doesn't mean that it is meteorite style. It is actually cut from a piece of meteorite. And that meteorite was found in, I think, Scandinavia back in 1906. So... God knows what they've been doing with it since 1906, but uh, it uh, has been shaved off and uh, put into uh, this particular limited edition model. I did uh, flick through this little brochure for you so that you could take a look at the collateral uh, with your uh, own eyes and uh, essentially just let you read it. So I'm going to shut up for the moment and let you guys read through this collateral. So there you have it, that is the uh, information about this particular model and a little bit of background about the Lunar Pilot. And we just get this watch out for you so you can take a look at it. Obviously there'll be some more close up footage and details about the specs in the video later on. But uh, here's the first viewing from it uh, when you unbox. You can see they do have a very matte sort of finish on the side, which is the titanium. And then you do have that uh, precisionist movement in there which gives it a very mechanical sort of look when the watch is or the chronograph is engaged. So 
thought it might be useful for you guys to see me struggling with measuring this thing. Um, so when we actually look at the bezel, you have a 41.1 mil uh, diameter, which is obviously based on my digital calipers, as you can see there. I'm not too sure how accurate they are, but they, they say they are, and it's not too far off what the official stats say. Uh, when we actually start to look at the watch from a uh, crown to um, a case diameter, 47.3, so it's a chunky old watch, which is, you know, half of the course with the uh, Lunar Pilot. They do make a reduced model, but um, like I say, this is the regular size. You can see there when you actually look at the case, uh, it's 43.1, so a couple of mils uh, larger than the uh, bezel to bezel. Uh, when we look at the top to bottom lug width, you are getting a fairly sizable 50.8 mils. So it is a big, big boy. But um, like I say, you know, some people like large watches. For me, I don't mind it. My wrist size is seven and a quarter inches though. When we look at the thickness of the watch, including that top hat crystal, you've got 15.4 mils of thickness. So here we have some footage for you of the watch on my wrist. For those of you who haven't watched my videos before, my wrist sits at around about seven and a quarter inches. Um, so I think probably an average size. Uh, the watch, I think probably because of the matte sort of effect on that titanium case, it doesn't sort of look too large. Um, some may disagree, but I don't think it's obscenely large. Um, it fits quite well. I say the um, strap, uh, again, at the price point, which is $2,600, I would have liked to have seen this on a titanium bracelet. But um, the leather strap's very nice. There's no issues with it whatsoever. But uh, like I say, I think for this price point, it would have been good to have seen a bracelet option on there. So on to the movement. And this is, in my opinion, one of the stars of the show. And uh, again, you can get it in the regular version of the Bull of Lunar Pilot. And it is the 262 kilohertz precisionist chronograph movement. Reason why this is so cool, in my opinion, is because it is high accuracy quartz, meaning it is accurate to be within around about 10 seconds per year. Putting that into perspective, a regular quartz watch is around about 15 seconds of accuracy per month. Uh, this really puts this watch into the realms of what you can find from Citizen's A660 or the Caliber 9F series from Grand Seiko that sit respectively at 5 to 10 seconds of accuracy per year. Again, those watches will cost you a pretty penny more than what a regular Bull of a Lunar Pilot would cost. Uh, but to be fair, this one sitting at 2,500 Australian is probably about the same or maybe a little bit cheaper than what you might find the um, Citizen or the um, Grand Seiko Quartz at. Naturally, the question you have to ask yourself is why would I buy this watch when it is so much more expensive than the regular Oliver Luna Pilot? Or for that matter, even the Anniversary Edition, which is a titanium and gold version. Well, it's quite simply because of this stunning dial. Now, again, people will see value in different things, but this is a genuine meteorite dial. As I mentioned, it was from a meteorite that was found in northern Scandinavia back in 1906, and the dial has been uh, produced from that meteorite. And obviously, meteorites are very rare items, so it does have some intrinsic value there. One of the things I like about this watch, though, is that the pattern on the dial is exquisite. It has got this truly wonderful, natural cross-stitch sort of um, approach to it, which you only find in meteorite. Of course, you can get a meteorite style dial, but to be able to go and tell your friends that you've got a proper piece of space on your wrist has a little bit of a cool factor, I think. So you're gonna be paying a bit of a premium for that. But again, it does really add to this watch because it is a space watch. It was worn in space, or the original was worn in space. In fact, it was worn on the moon. And uh, like I say, so, you know, for me, the meteorite dial somewhat offsets the 
very high price, let's be honest, of this particular watch. But you can see there, you know, a variety of different um, lighting conditions, uh, but that matte sort of gray cross stitch effect is pretty cool. So on to the case and crystal. Now, much the same as uh, all the other Lunar Pilots, the watch does have a raised top hat crystal. So it does have a sanded edge, a uh, discernible edge to that crystal that sits above the case. Some people like it, some people don't. I really don't care. I do agree with people, however, though, that there is a chance that that crystal could get cracked if you bang it on something. But that's probably only if you're a bit of a clutter, you know what, um, a clumsy guy. And uh, I don't tend to bang my um, wrists. Uh, I might drag my knuckles a little bit, but I certainly don't bang my wrists against too much stuff. Um, Again, the case is made out of titanium, so it is a lot lighter than what you would expect with a stainless steel case. Again, though, with the dimensions of this watch, it is a meaty old watch, so having it uh, a little bit lighter is uh, fine for uh, all intents and purposes. You can see they do have the polished chrono pushers and the signed crown, which is pushing. It doesn't screw down at all. You can see there you do have that crystal uh, raised very high above the bezel. Now the bezel, I'm guessing, is steel. I couldn't find any materials to tell me whether it was a polished titanium, but I'm guessing that it's probably steel. The sandblasted uh, case obviously is titanium though. I thought it might be worth showing you the case back for this watch. Um, for all intents and purposes, it's the same as every other Bolivar Luna pilot. In fact, um, the special edition or the commemorative edition is probably a little bit more flash than this. It does, however, have the limited edition and the uh, number that you've acquired. In this case, it being 4,274 out of 5,000. But the case back and the engraving is the same as every other Bolivar Luna pilot model that you can see. I do do think this is a stainless steel case back though guys um, the I don't think it's a titanium but uh, I might be wrong so on to the macro footage for you guys this is my favorite part where we start to really delve into the detail on the dial you can see there you do have a cutout or cutout sub dials um, and uh, you do have those concentric circles to give a little bit of uh, depth and texture, I suppose, to those subdials. Printing on the dial is very, very good, as you would expect, and overall finishing of the hands, fantastic. And you can see there you do have a very good inner bezel. Uh, I would say the writing is raised and has almost like a gold effect to it. Now, one thing to mention is that no matter how much I polish wipe these, there's always going to be dust on them. So the dust is not actually in the dial. It's just sat on that crystal. While we talk about the crystal, the um, anti-reflective coating on it is very effective. You can see it is really, really clear. But uh, yeah, I was really impressed with the uh, macro footage of this. Again, the meteorite dial is just very different, and it's cool to see those natural patterns um, and square lines, which you don't apparently see in nature. So um, that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, macro footage. All right, so the strap. Um, I think I said this at the start of this video. I always feel a little bit cheated with uh, watches when you get a leather strap as opposed to a steel, or in this case, what I would have hoped would be a titanium bracelet. Uh, mainly because of the price point, you know, at two and a half thousand dollars, you are getting um, a titanium case head, you're getting a decent movement, uh, and you're getting a limited edition printing. Um, does that really make up the what two thousand dollars difference? Uh, well, it doesn't with the the bracelet or the strap in this case. It is very nice. It's a lovely soft leather. Um, it does have signed furniture on it, and you know it's it's okay. It's all right. But my only preference is to have a bracelet. Um, it would have just been nice, you know, if they actually had like a NATO strap or something as an extra, but that's just my uh, my opinion.
So guys, you have my final thoughts here. Um, is the watch cool? Absolutely. It's got a meteorite dial. It's a space or a moon watch. What more can you say? It's got a definite cool factor about it. But I still have to come back to the pricing and that's where it just doesn't make sense to me. And mainly probably because I um, don't see the huge value in the meteorite dial. Yes, I think it's nice, but do I think it's got um, the validity to make the pricing so much higher for what is apparently a limited edition? So here you can see on the Starbuy website, you've got the pricing there, $2,599. It is substantially reduced from what you would find it for in retail elsewhere, but again, it is almost, well, it's $2,600. There's no way of, um, of dressing up as something uh, different. I've said this in the video previously. The other commemorative edition that you can buy is literally half of the price. Again, here at Starbuy, you can see it's on sale for $1,349. That also has a titanium case. It does have a gold and silver uh, commemorative dial, obviously not meteorite, so there is that to consider. But for all intents and purposes, it is the same watch, uh, especially on the inside. It is also limited and um, also comes in a much better, in my opinion, limited edition box with that commemorative medallion. Um, when you actually start to look past those two special editions, you then go down a price to $9.29 for the mini Lunar Pilot. So some people have complained the original Lunar Pilot is just far too big. Uh, this, they call it the mini, it's only I think about a mil, two mils smaller, and it doesn't seem to wear that much smaller in my opinion. But less than a grand, it's you know definitely something to consider. Here's the model that I have, which is the steel bracelet, uh, and it's the bead blasted version. So it is the mid price point at $749. And then last but not least, again, considering that this is what, maybe a 20th of the price, is that right? My maths, 25% of the price. Um, this is the bog standard Lunar Pilot, which you can pick up for $529, which is over $2,000 less than the meteorite dial. So that's what I have to consider, guys. You know, does it does it make up for that? You know, the, the, what you're paying does it make up for it? I don't think so, but some people will do. And please, don't let me put you off. Um, I, I think it's a very very nice watch, and if you've got the cash to burn, then fine. But for me, the lower end models are more than enough for my taste. Again, you do have that precisionist movement. So regardless of whether you choose the $2,500 or the $500 watch, you've got a high accuracy quartz chronograph that has got a little bit of space history for you to wear on the wrist. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do like it, please do consider subscribing. And I will see you in a new video very soon. Take care.